Produced by Malik. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Malik's Water Garden. Today's going to be a really fun video. I'm really going to be doing this really, uh, I guess it's night time now in my fish room. And uh, the lights are off. I didn't want to like, turn on the lights and spook all the fish. But I believe this video needs to get recorded and released today. So I'm doing this right now uh, at like 4.30 in the morning for you guys. So we're going to be talking about pH. Uh, how to when it comes to breeding zebra plecos. So this is how to breed zebra plecos part two uh, pertaining to pH. Now a lot of you guys have a lot of questions about yesterday's video. If you haven't checked that out, I highly recommend checking that out. I'll put a link up here on how to breed zebra plecos with Dr. Thomas. Today's video is going to be a part two kind of touching up on some of the questions you guys had in correlation to yesterday's video as well as how it pertains to our pH. A lot of you guys seem to have misconstrued what I said uh, into thinking that you have to lower the pH in your tank to get the animals to spawn. These guys are known to spawn uh, in pH ranges anywhere from 6 all the way up to 8. There's the records of them spawning, like my friend who lives in uh, down further down in Ontario, like more south of me, uh, about 3-4 hours, has really hard water with 400 parts per million and his pH is 8. And he recently had a clutch of uh, zebra plecos in his tank. And uh, Olivia, uh, who made a comment on this on uh, Olivia's fish room, really intelligent comment by the way, also made that comment uh, and uh, really, really highlighted that the animal does spawn uh, naturally in a variety of pHs. Now, that's, having said that, that is not the po point I was trying to make on yesterday's video. Uh, to quickly really touch on uh, all of your questions that uh, you directed to me on my personal messenger as well as on the comment section, which I will get to uh, later today uh, at some point, is that the animal naturally can spawn in a variety of pHs. It seems to spawn anywhere from 6 all the way up to 8. And it doesn't seem to matter for, for the fish particularly or the egg development of, of the, the actual pH of the tank. Now what seems to matter is the actual the carbonate hardness. So these animals naturally come from fast flowing river. Uh, if you haven't checked out Dr. Leandro Sosa's video on the natural environment of uh, his hypercestral zebra, I highly recommend checking that out. I'll put a link to his channel up here so you can check that out. And uh, it shows that they, the water is quite stable even throughout the year. It's called white water rapids basically. It's a white water rapid environment where it's really fast flowing, clean, uh, crystal clear water. Now there's not a lot of sedimentation and there's not a lot of dissolved minerals content in the water. The natural hardness seems to be between 14 and 39 throughout the year. So that's 14 parts per million to 39 parts per million. That's like actually recorded natural hardness in the region where these guys come from. So it's very soft water, but the pH seems to be quite stable at like seven or slightly higher or slightly lower. Actually, uh, the, the record I believe is a little higher than seven. So they do seem to enjoy uh, neutral water or slightly basic to slightly acidic is fine as well, I believe. But uh, the, the hardness seems to be quite low. Now, for long-term care of the animals, they seem to do okay in, in hardness of 400 parts per million even. And I've seen them in really ha hard water being kept long-term quite successfully. But for breeding purposes, I believe that the animals are reluctant to spawn in water that has a high calcium carbonate content. Now, this goes into like a lot of animals that are like, if they are wild caught, which a lot of you guys probably don't have anymore, and if you do, you already know what you're doing. So I wouldn't, you wouldn't be watching this video. So like F1s and F2s are captive born animals, so they are more easier to spawn, I would say, uh, in uh, aquarium settings than uh, wild caught animals. Now, having said that, in my case, the water hardness is uh, quite favorable for these guys. With a few water changes, I can easily get my fish to spawn. So it's not a big issue for me or somebody that has relatively softer water or moderately soft water uh, to get these guys to spawn with a simple trick of using like almond leaves or something like that or just doing quite a bit of water changes to bring your nitrates down and simulating a rainfall event uh, in nature. So now correlating that with the timing of the year as well as like other factors that might like your fish being ready to spawn, it being gravid, there being males available, caves and all that things factor in. But the pH doesn't seem to matter. Now yesterday's video I was actually talking about the TDS and uh, how it affects the pH. That's the main thing that I was stressing yesterday and I think that's the main thing I'm going to stress today as well in this video. And I uh, highly recommend checking yesterday's video out and thank you for everybody that has checked out yesterday's video by the way. Now, uh, what I would want to really stress is that the pH does not matter for the spawning of hypercestral zebra as far as I understand. As long as you keep it in a neutral pH, the animals will spawn. But 
that the carbon hardness, as you reduce the carbon hardness, that inadvertently can drop your pH. So like as a result of reducing your carbonate hardness, you can drop your pH. Uh, there are easier ways to drop your carbonate hardness like adding RO water or rain water. We will be looking at that in detail in an upcoming video and uh, stay tuned for that and subscribe if you haven't for that video. But for the purpose of this video, I really want to stress that you do not need to change the pH at all to get your fish to spawn. A few people messaged me and asked me yesterday like how do I get the pH to drop? My pH hasn't dropped. I put this, I put that. I did this, I did that and it didn't work. Uh, my pH is still at 7.4 or 7.5 or 7.6 or whatever it is. And the reason for that a lot of times is because your tanks are very clean and pristine and there's not a lot of organic debris. So because there's not a lot of organic debris, if you are running a bare bottom tank especially, you are not going to run into a lot of problems with your pH crashing because your tank does not have a lot of uh, debris, organic uh, waste being built to create acids and stuff like that to use up the calcium carbonate that is in the water. So they will hold a stable pH. Now, in a case where you do have organic debris and uh, biological matter that's decaying in your tank and stuff like oak leaf or leaves or decaying leaf litter or decaying plant matter or even uh, some excessive, excessive fish food, snails, other things like that, that could potentially deplete your calcium carbonate, that is where you could be running into issues. So you have to really pay attention to that type of stuff. And even if you do run a bare bottom tank and you're using RO and remineralizing to the desired amount, I would highly recommend monitoring your pH on a regular basis. Uh, now having said that, you should be keeping them at about 7.0 pH if you are running RO. And uh, if you are not running RO and if you're using tap water, keep them at the pH that your tap water is at because uh, changing the pH is detrimental to the fish. Uh, Olivia from Olivia's Fish Room yesterday actually made a really intelligent comment. Big ups to her channel actually. She's doing really well uh, for such a young person with hypercestral species, various different ones. And uh, she's, I don't even think she's a teenager yet and she's having quite a bit of success breeding various types of hypercestral, which shows how easy these animals are to spawn and uh, also how uh, with simple things like uh, clean water and doing uh, basic things, uh, anybody can get these animals to spawn, but it's just the you have to pay attention to basic things. So this is what I'm trying to give you guys in this channel right now. So uh, the, the pH 7.0 or the pH that your tap water is at, I mean there's records of them spawning anywhere from 6 to 8 pH, but uh, really want to stress the the TDS even uh, Dave I was actually talking to Dave Yarman earlier today big ups to Dave Yarman there's a special video gonna come out I think I'm gonna make a special video about all the things that Dave has been finding Dave is amazing when it comes down to it a little quick tidbit actually that's pertaining to today's video uh, that I will talk about in, in a bit uh, he found out this new material which is called biohome and uh, it's actually from Pond Guru. It's actually not a new material at all. It's been going around for a while. I've actually been subscribed to Pond Guru's channel for the longest time, and I know I actually bought Bio Home, but it's a Pond product. But uh, Dave has been using it for his Zebra Pleco tank as well as his other tanks as well, and uh, he's getting ex exceptional results in uh, lowering nitrates by using this uh, biological media called Bio Home. So we'll be looking at that in the future, and I'll talk about the nitrates a little bit on this this video as well to get you guys started on to the next video which is uh, how to lowering your nitrates uh, but basically uh, these guys clean water low TDS you know relatively stable pH of let's say neutral or a little higher or a little lower and uh, you should easily get them to spawn uh, we will be looking at temperature and other types of uh, variable data as well as uh, caves and other basic needs for the animals in the upcoming videos as well as basic ways to structure caves for optimal fry growth and stuff like that dr thomas actually has a lot of good information on that as well and uh, i follow a lot of those techniques not just from him but in general this is just play core knowledge so we're going to be giving you that in the upcoming video because a lot of people seem to not have the understanding of how many caves these animals need uh, even a few people that i know that are successful at spawning them barely give the animals any caves and uh, that seems to be not healthy but we'll be looking at that in the upcoming videos as well and uh, also the social dynamic structure of zebra plecos so there's a, a community structure in them and uh, there's a social structure there's a hierarchy and there's almost like a village i call them i have three separate villages in here i call them village one village two and village three you can probably see some of these guys moving up and down the, the little eyes that you're seeing all of those are zebra plecos if you're seeing eyes in the case like right there uh there's probably a bunch here those are all different zebra plecos there's like 17 or 18 in here 
and uh, they're all doing good. And there's another tank behind me that has like five uh, of the new ones that I got that survived the ordeal. And uh, there's uh, the Super Whites in there. So like, uh, we are really happy with the success so far with all my Playcos and uh, I'll be doing an update video on that. So comment below and let me know. And also, if you have any questions regarding today's video as well as yesterday's video, I highly recommend commenting below. I will try to answer all your questions in uh, video updates like this as well as on the comments themselves. And uh, so thank you so much for your love and support. The channel's doing really great. That's all thanks to you guys and it feels really great. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. God bless you all.